What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Form Check Friday. We're gonna get started with a viewer submitted video, which is what we do on this channel. We're gonna critique Chris's bench press. Now, we left off last week by leaving the audience to critique Chris's bench in the comments. And uh, we'll give a quick little refresher, some of the context behind his lift. He's lifting 235 for triple, nine and a half RP, so tough set. He's been running the, out, the eight week Calgary Barbell program. He'd like to compete next year and he's only been training his bench for about eight months. So the first big thing that I know notice on Chris's bench is if we watch here and his upper back watch as he unracks go to unrack we see the feet slide and we see him have to lose a fair bit of position uh, even in terms of keeping his chest up so we could do a lot to stay tighter out of the rack as we kind of unrack the bar and bring it out into position maybe having somebody to give you a handoff would help or if you can find a different bench press that doesn't have these really aggressive J hooks now Staying big between reps and staying sort of driving up into that arch is going to be really important. Maintaining back tension between reps. It looks like as we go through this first rep, quite tight, quite good. Bar path is really good off the chest. It comes back over the shoulders and up, which is what we're looking for. <coughs> that starts to deteriorate a little bit as the set goes on. We start to see these shoulders inch themselves out of position more and more each rep and then we end up with this last rep being quite tough due to the loss of position in the upper back so let's maintain position in the upper back maintain more tension through the feet during the unrack and between reps and that should go a long ways for you our next lifter here is justin he's doing some squats and if anybody out there is interested in being featured on a form check friday go ahead and click the video on the screen right now for instructions on how to make it yourself now, Justin is doing 255 for a triple here. He says he's just transitioning to low bar. He's had some shoulder issues specifically on the left side. He weighs about 158 pounds and he's looking to compete in about a year. So the biggest thing I'm noticing is that the grip is really stuffed in narrow. Now this might have some interplay with your shoulder pain. So if we can widen this grip, I think we can put the shoulders into a bit of a better position. Right now we're a little winged out. We're seeing some elevation, some protraction, which is to say we're shrugging up and forward a little bit in the shoulders. And I think it's a result of this very narrow grip. If we can create a little bit of space here for the shoulders to sort of lay flat down on the rib cage, I think we can create a much tighter rack position, which is going to prevent some of this tipping forward out of the bottom. Now we can see as the set wears on, first rep's pretty good. I think your depth is on point, Justin. That's another thing worth mentioning. This third rep though, we do start to see that bar kind of pull you forward here. We start to see that bar kind of pull forward, which causes the hips to shoot up, the knees to come back a little bit. And I think it's all coming from this rack position. So let's try widening the grip. Make sure that you're pulling those shoulder blades down your back, not allowing them to shrug up. And I think that might make your shoulder feel a little bit better as well as just make low bar a little more comfortable overall. Our next submission here comes from Kevin. Kevin's doing some bench press. Uh, he says he's been lifting for just over 10 years, power lifting for three. And uh, he's got a second meet coming up in about a month. Month. He says he's working on tucking his elbows more and using leg drive while keeping his butt down. So we'll make sure that his butt stays on the bench. The big thing I'm noticing here is you're really having to dump the bar to get a touch because your grip is so narrow. You have a very long range of motion. You get to about here comfortably and then that bar has to come forward and uh, and really kind of out of the groove to get a touch. So it's unsurprising. You mentioned it at a sticking point sort of just off the chest and that's going to be where we're fighting to get the bar back into position because when we're coming down, we have to dump it out here because our grip is so narrow. Now this might be for a reason, it might be because your shoulders are more comfortable, um, whatever. I would like to see you try moving your grip out a little bit wider. I think it's gonna have a myriad of benefits for your bench press and not necessarily moving from you know here to max legal, but let's try a little bit wider than what you're doing and see if we can make some strides like that. Up next, we have Brandon doing some deadlifts. Now, Brandon's been lifting for about six months. He says he's doing his first competition in a few months from now and struggles with his lockout. Now he says he's not sure between sumo and conventional. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, but the first big thing I'm noticing here is the lack of a real lockout. So we get to here, we're not quite locked in the hips, and on the reps where we do get the hips through, the knees are coming unlocked. So I think we need a lot of work on the lockout. We need to get uh, a lot more sort of glute squeeze. We got to push the hips in, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, we're also getting a little bit of a shrug up at the top, so I think there's some bracing issues that we could do a lot better with. Pulling the shoulder blades down, getting the lats on nice and tight um, and really just squeezing your butt at the top of the deadlift without unlocking your knees. Now in terms of the sumo versus conventional, 
uh, sort of idea, I, I would say definitely try sumo. Uh, I don't think that there's any sort of anatomical way we can predetermine uh, this person's better for sumo, this person's better for uh, uh, conventional. It just doesn't work like that. Um, there might be some sort of general rules that we can look at uh, implementing for first time lifters, but I would recommend definitely try it if you haven't before. See how sumo feels. You might feel it's, you might find it's way more intuitive and uh, might benefit you a lot to pull a little bit differently. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention here is we got to work on trying to pull the slack out of the bar a little bit. And what I mean by that is before you initiate the sort of let's get this bar off the floor phase, try to pull yourself into the bar. Now, when you're bringing your hips down like this, I don't want you to just sit down and, and, and just move your hips down this way. I want you to actively tighten your upper back, tighten your sort of feet against the floor, try to find tension through the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, the back, try to get to the point where the bar is almost floating, you're creating so much tension, and then think about just pushing the floor away to get that bar started. Alrighty, now we have Albert. Albert's doing some squats here. This is 315 pounds. He says he's been bodybuilding for a long time. He's 22 and he's just started getting into powerlifting. So he wants to take a look at his squat and uh, see what we think. This is uh, the beginning of his journey towards some strength gains. And we're gonna leave this for the audience to check out. So go ahead and weigh in in the comments below. Constructive criticism only. And we'll see y'all next week for Form Check Friday.